Hey everyone, today we're gonna to create a data analyst resume. Now really the biggest difference between a data analyst resume and a regular resume is how we represent our skills. Because there's some crossover there, part of this video will be going over what makes a good data analyst resume section by section, but we'll also be identifying best practices for resumes in general throughout the video. Again, we'll be going through each section of the resume step by step. I'll also be providing a couple of different templates, both for a entry level resume and a resume for those who have a little bit of experience in the data field. And I'll have those linked in the description below. All right, so let's jump in. So here I have a resume I put together in Word. First thing we have here is just our info section, our phone number, email, location, and then a couple of things I recommend for any resume is a portfolio and a LinkedIn link. Now, a portfolio may not be as applicable for someone who has some experience in the data field already, uh, but especially if you're seeking an entry-level role, a portfolio is gonna be absolutely critical to helping you get a job in data. I'll link another video here uh, where I walk through how to put together a portfolio step-by-step. -step. So if you don't have one of those, definitely check out that video. But we wanna throw that link right here in our little info section, and then our LinkedIn profile right below that. Underneath that, we have a section for technical skills. And so I like to list these out in sort of a bullet point format. It operates as a mental checklist for any recruiters or hiring managers going through the resume to show that we have the skills that, or to show that you have the skills that they're looking for. Uh, and they can quickly just check off the list each one. So first I have SQL here, uh, and I also listed just a few different SQL flavors that I've worked with throughout the years. You don't have to put this, it's not completely necessary, but even if you're just seeking an entry level role, you could put the ones that you do have experience with. Underneath that, I have Excel, and I listed some of the more popular functions that will either be asked about in an interview or are just more common Excel formulas. So, here for example, I put XLOOKUP, pivot tables, and visuals, visualizations in Excel. These are all things that I've actually been tested on in interviews for Excel specifically, especially earlier on in my career. Underneath that, I have of Python and putting the specific Python packages you do know is more important than say putting the SQL flavors you know because these are actually going to dictate the type of functions that you actually know in Python. Underneath that I have Power BI, Power Automate, Snowflake, Tableau. Again, whatever skills you have or what you're gonna wanna put in there, uh, I just more am going through the skills, some of the skills that I know and showing the format that you wanna go for when you're putting this together. And then I like to put together a section for soft skills and I call it professional skills. So I have things like data visualization, business analytics, product sense, revenue operations, statistics. It's just another section where we can add in some additional keywords that maybe aren't directly technical or are more overarching terms that we can utilize in our resume and to hopefully stand out as we're applying. Underneath that, I have a certification section, and I don't mean certifications like an online SQL course that you took on Udemy or something like that. That's more for learning. You can add those certifications maybe to your LinkedIn or something like that, but I reserve this section for proprietary exam-based certifications. Like here, I have the Microsoft Certified Power BI Data Analyst, the PL300 exam, and the Tableau Desktop Specialist exam, which are both exams that I've actually taken and certifications that I actually have. I like to differentiate this apart from the education section uh, because your education section I reserve more for like formal education maybe if you've done a boot camp in addition to uh, your formal degree you can add that in there but for tech certifications that are proprietary like the ones I mentioned I like to put it in its own section. Then underneath that this is a totally optional section but it's something I like to include just hobbies. I feel like it's a way to communicate a little bit more of who you are to uh, the hiring manager, recruiter, or whoever may be interviewing you that looks at your res resume beforehand. Sometimes hobbies can stand out. Someone can see that, oh, uh, you like mixology. What's your favorite kind of drink to make? I'm really into that as well. It could just be a connection point 
Uh, but again, it's not necessary. If you're uh, crammed for space in your resume, it's definitely something you can take out. And while I'm on that note, I want to draw attention to the fact that I don't have any sort of summary or about me section in my resume. I just don't think those tend to be helpful. I think they take away space from some more important elements that we can add into our resume, like our work experience or our skills and things like that. And most summaries tend to all just sound the same. I'm a dynamic professional with this many years of experience targeting this kind of role. We already know those things more or less, so I don't think it's a value add. Instead, save that space and put that towards your work experience, your projects, things like that. And with that said, the next section I have here is work experience. Now, if you're seeking an entry level job or you've never worked as a data analyst before, instead of having your work experience up front here, I want you to have a project section instead. So I'm gonna to toggle over here to my other resume example that I have where I show a project section first. The reason I like to have a project section ahead of the work experience section for those in a more entry level position is because if you don't have that directly relevant work experience you might get passed up kind of quickly and projects are an opportunity for you to communicate how you've worked with the skills to make something really cool and actually put the things you've learned into practice. So this is going to go along with your portfolio. Take a few of your portfolio projects, maybe your favorite ones, or your best ones, and then throw them on your resume and you can lay them out similar to how you would lay out a work experience section. But here's how I like to do it. One way you could lay these out is having the title of the project, uh, just put here it's personal project, when it was completed. And then in each of your bullet points, you're just explaining the tools that you use, the process that you went about to create the project, and how you saw this project through to completion. So here I mention use of SQL, Excel, and Tableau. Each of those tools highlighted. I think highlighting is a really great way to have certain keywords stand out in your bullet points. So whether that is a metric or um, some sort of impact statement or a tool, smart use of highlighting, and again, just one or two words, not like a whole sentence, can really help draw attention to the recruiter's eyes as they're scanning through your resume. So again, here I just have three different project examples to use in my resume, uh, to go ahead of the work experience section to show how I've used each of these tools. And again, all of these projects should be able to be viewed by the recruiter in your portfolio. Quick note, these aren't projects that I've actually made. These are just sample projects. So if you go to my portfolio website here, you're not gonna see these, but I wanna put these there for the sake of example. And so then the next section here is the work experience section. And you don't have to list every single job you've ever had. We want to try to keep our resume to one page in general. So if you're only able to fit one or two of your most uh, recent roles, that's totally fine. And then just make sure you're calling attention to anything you've done in that role that can be translated as analytical experience. Even if you've only used Excel, that's still a technical tool. Highlight that, talk about that. Teachers use Excel all the time. I work with a lot of different teachers to help them get into data, but really every industry, almost every industry uses Excel to some extent. So that's something you can add in there. And then if we go back to our other resume here, so this would be one for someone who maybe has a little bit more experience. Uh, so I just have a few different roles that are actual analyst roles. And anytime you're putting together a resume bullet point, you want to make sure that you're speaking to uh, action-oriented results, things that you've done that actually made some sort of a difference in the company, and you can evidence that by use of metrics, like you know improved performance from this report by 15% or something like that. That could be difficult to do, but you just wanna do that to the best of your ability as you're putting these together. And later on in the video, I'll share uh, a couple of helpful resources for doing that, but as you're putting those together, keep that in mind. You can see that in these examples, again, I'm highlighting skills, I'm highlighting metrics, I'm highlighting 
uh, just things that I've done that made a difference in the company. Or in both of these resumes, I put a little note at the bottom here saying that additional experience can be viewed on my LinkedIn. So if you're worried about someone thinking, oh, is this uh, you know the only experience this person has because this is all that's on their resume, you just direct them to your LinkedIn and they'll probably look at your LinkedIn at some point anyways. Uh, but this just lets them know that you do have additional experience, it's just not shown on your resume. Like here, for example, you could see I graduated in 2015, but this role down here started in 2021. I definitely had a job for those six years, um, even though it's not represented on the resume. Most people will know that, but I know that sometimes people are concerned about not having every role that they've done on their resume. And so with that, at the very end, I have the education section. My degree is very unimpressive in terms of how it relates to data because uh, it's just an English degree from nine years ago at this point. So that's why I put it at the bottom. If you have an analytics degree or a data science degree or something like that, you could consider putting it near the top or putting it on this left section here, highlighting that a little bit more. But if you just have a regular degree that's not data or business analytics oriented, then you probably just want to have it further down at the end of your resume like I have here. So again, both of these templates I'll have linked in the description. You can download these and use them at your discretion. And the final thing I want to talk about is writing and optimization. In my opinion, the hardest part of putting together a resume is writing out your bullet points and putting on paper what you want to say. People I talk to, this is always the hardest thing. It's the thing I struggle with the most. Writing is really hard. We're not all writers, we're not all marketers, so that could be a pretty difficult element of putting together a resume at times. So there are a couple tools that I recommend for helping with this. The first is ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a really great tool for ideation and giving you a foundation to work with for your bullet points and all of the writing in your resume. In fact, all of the personal projects that I put on the entry level resume were all created by ChatGPT. Those weren't my projects that I've made. I just wanted to put together something for the video. So I just put in a simple prompt to ChatGPT and it gave me all of that. So it's really not difficult to put in a simple prompt to ChatGPT to give you some ideas. You might wanna take those and edit those a little bit, but having that much of the work done by ChatGPT can be really helpful in a lot of instances. You also want to run the writing in your resume through a tool like Grammarly to make sure there's no grammatical errors. It may not seem like a big deal, but I've been called out for spelling mistakes in interviews before on my resume. So you just wanna avoid anything that's gonna give them a reason to uh, be critical towards you or potentially write you off. You just want to keep it clean and professional and tools like Grammarly will help you do that. Last thing is you'll also want to make sure you're catering your resume to the job description and including as many keywords as possible. This will help you get through any application tracking systems, but it's also going to make sure that you're a good fit on paper when they're going through your resume. Take the time to scan through the job description or run it through a word cloud tool to get the keywords that you wanna put in your resume and just include as many of those as possible to help you stand out and be a good fit for the role. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope the video was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe as it does help the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.